it is your boy Cecil here, bringing guys a video here today, bringing you guys a Photoshop to record your own, very cool, we're gonna go with like the whole Twitch package series kind of video kind of thing, right, and this video here today is gonna be going like simplistic, stylistic, something with noise in it, probably, I don't have any idea right now for the title, but as you can see, this is the example I have here, it's a very sophisticated look, and like, just like I said, uh, the whole little noise kind of uh, texturing contrast is actually a pretty cool way to just kind of, like I said, make some contrast in your design that I feel like it looks really, really good, and the way I set this up was basically just kind of like this really cool like sort of side profile saying the word start multiple times um for me i might even kind of like animate the whole word start i'm not gonna do that video of course but you know animate the word start to kind of like have like scroll downward and just kind of have that be a thing um because i can even probably even change the orientation and make it say start going from you know s-t-a-r-t -T in the in the right horizontal uh to be vertical form i probably would switch that up if i'm being honest, uh, if i'm being honest right now is what i'm thinking about but anyway hope you guys enjoyed the video here today two likes on the video equals a secret download below which will most likely be this psd for you guys go ahead and just you know just choose up mess around change around and use for your uh twitch package stuff like that right so hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video and hope you guys learned something so so is now going to start this video <laughs> why am i talking about that i have no idea all right we're just gonna get, we're gonna get this thing going also how how many of you guys are jealous of my geo hoodie huh jealous super jealous it's so beautiful i, I love it i love it all right, homies, let's gonna get this thing going right here, right now. So the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is basically address this whole little portion right here. Uh, when I say right here, I mean this right here, right? And this is like, uh, we've been doing this kind of like cool little, I would just call like a really cool, like almost like a, what is the correct word, but like a bevel, almost like a bevel, like increase kind of like a, a uh, pinch almost right like a pinch and I feel like this is really cool just kind of like way to spice up things rather than just having a clean solid gradient there's nothing wrong with it but to kind of elevate it is kind of how I did this here is so I'm gonna be doing this and now I'll just go ahead and show you guys how we do the little noise thing um because some of you guys might not really understand it to make it look as super clean as possible but um it's not too hard at all honestly it's probably you could just probably use noise but it, we're using filter gallery raw for this um raw or camera filter raw there we go and uh yeah that's basically really it that's pretty much the entire design just overall the I guess the construction of it and the composition of it is uh, I guess what creates the design overall as well, right? So let's go get this thing going. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm just gonna pencil this shape right here. And the way I basically did that was I click once on the outside here, click another one on the outside over here, and then click and drag toward the top right of my mouse pad. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just take this little uh, anchor point here, or excuse me, this little handle here, hold control by the way to select it. And I'm just gonna move it and kind of give myself a nice little curve, I believe is, is pretty accurate to what I did before. Oh, wait, it's a little bit more like this. Okay, I, I kind of want to just make sure I get one of the same kind of angles here. We'll just move it out there. And I'll say that this is pretty okay. All right. All right. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hold Alt on this so that I can just cl click and go around. Or, excuse me, uh, create an anchor point and not have a handle on the outside. It doesn't really matter because all you got to do is just swing this around outside anyway. Um, Now, that's good. We're going to right-click on a new layer. Let's make a new layer, right? <coughs> excuse me. All right. Make a new layer, right click, fill path, go to uh, contents, drop down color, and you can just basically use any color for right now because we're going to do right away is on this new layer here, whatever color you happen to, happen to choose, just double click on it. We're going to go to a gradient overlay, and the gradient that I actually use for this is a nice little orange, and for this orange color I used, uh, the orange uh, for the actual uh, highlight side, it doesn't really matter, but basically this is the, the two colors that I use for the orange, the hex codes are F. A5500, and on the right hand side here, the hex code is FAB300. So, this is a nice little kind of solid, really high contrast is orange and looks really good in my opinion. Um, so, now that that is that, I can go ahead and just rasterize this layer style because I want it to be that color right there and have no problems when I actually clip mask things on top of the layer. So, all we really have right now is so far, it's just a little kind of like a little, um, just a little kind of like a gradient, a gradient shape, right? So, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hold control on the actual before I do that, actually, we're gonna make a new layer. Sorry, right, make a new layer, we're gonna right click. Go to create clip mask. That's going to put this layer here only to show on top of this layer here. So this is going to happen here is we're going to go ahead and hold control and click on this shape that you just created right here. Hold control and click on that thumbnail. What's going to happen is it's going to select. If I uh, press M my keyboard and or go to this little tool right here, you can move this freely. Uh, it's going to give you guys a selection of the shape that you just created. So what I'm going to do is here is I'm going to kind of just drag it down just like so, right? Now, when I drag it down, I'm going to go ahead and just take, I believe I actually used a white. We'll see if I'm wrong, but I believe I just used a white. And we're just going to kind of like almost like paint it like very, very closely to the outside. Not too close here because if you did it here, it'll be very, very thick. And that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for a more of a very kind of faded um, look to it here. So I'm just going to kind of, you know, paint near the outside. If you need to make your brush a little bit bigger so that way you don't get too close to the inside like this. Definitely don't. That's not what you want. You definitely want something more around these lines <coughs> of kind of like kind of painting it like this, right? And I'll say once you have that, 
you can press Control D to deselect, and then you can go to your blend mode, change it from normal to overlay, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your eraser, right? And you're just gonna just erase one side here, and we're gonna put this over here on the on the on the. I'm gonna curve this around just a little bit, and I know I erased this side here, so I'm gonna do for this other one here is I'm not gonna erase the same exact side. I mean, you can probably, it doesn't really matter too much, but really what I ended up doing was just racing this side, just kind of make it cohesive in its own little way. And uh, I think it looks pretty good now, okay? And I believe I did it a couple times, didn't I? Yeah, I did it three times for this one. So I'm gonna put this one here. We'll do this one right here. I'll, I'll just move this like so. And then for the next one, I'm just gonna take this duplicate here and then hold Alt and drag. That's how you make a duplicate as well. And I said that's pretty good, and it definitely has a nice little creasing kind of effect here. And it's really cool. It's one of those things I basically always, I guess I've always been using for a while now. Uh, ever since basically I, I kind of started using more color, I used to use a lot of black and white for some odd reason. It was just way more easier for me to design with. Um, dudes, I, I just like getting so, what do you call it, uh, self-conscious of my hair because it's holy crap. Yikes, we need, a, we need to get a haircut, boys. Um, all right, so anyway, what I'm gonna do now is gonna do the whole little kind of like noise part right here, right? So for this shape here, all I basically did is I start off from this bounce sign here, start uh, the second, excuse me, point, uh, anchor is gonna be on the top, more like the top right side, and then just basically drag up to your mouse pad, and then you take this little uh, handle right here and just kind of just drag it toward the bottom right of your mouse to kind of get this little angle here. Now, if you see how my uh, angle's a little bit further out, just take this point, Kind of move it back over here and then just re go bottom right and you just kind of keep doing that rinse and repeat until you get a shade that you personally want um now the reason i'm just showing you guys in this perspective i feel, uh, I feel like it's a little more easier for you guys to kind of like comprehend uh how to get the shape angle it's kind of like a very simple just use like a almost like, a, almost like an up and down kind of crane kind of thing if you guys want to think of it that way um <clears throat> but basically just kind of say your say to yourself if, if you feel like you need to like kind of maybe do something like this hold on i don't want to like actually get rid of this path i'm just gonna make a new one really quick and I was gonna say, like, if you wanna do something like this, you guys can, and have something more go like outside this way, and have this entire canvas here be the the whole little noisy part here, and then you kind of go around this way, right? And then you kind of just fit everything more or less in like this area right here. I don't know. It's probably one of those things. It just all depends on what you guys really want to do. But for me, I'm just gonna go right here, and I'm gonna go ahead and go all the way around again. Excuse me, on the outside of my canvas, so that way it fills in on this uh, right hand side here. We're gonna drop down uh, where our background layer is, by the way. Oh, by the way, the background layer color is hex code 07080C. That's a nice little blue, dark blue kind of black uh, tone there. <clears throat> and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make a new layer, and I'm gonna go ahead and just right click, fill the path, press okay. Now it doesn't really matter what color it is because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna immediately go back into this. Now I know by the way, you can use your gradients and like the whole right click fill thing, but I just been, I don't know, it's one of those more like a routine kind of faster things for me to just use layer style. Um, so I'm gonna go to gradient overlay. <laughs> and the gray that I used was, drum roll please, because your boy definitely don't remember. <laughs> um, I, I believe it was this color right here. This little gradient here, uh, but however, I did use a different gradient. Let me just quickly get it though, because I honestly forgot it to save it. And I like to give you guys the exact same gradients um, for this, and I'll show you guys that in a second. But for now, this right here is perfectly fine. So the reason why I use a nice little gray of black, but the black here shouldn't actually be super, is it actually pure black? It is. It should be a little bit above uh, pure black. That way the noise doesn't look too weird. Um, I'm gonna press okay. So before I press okay, actually, the blacks that I use here, hex code 060606 is the black. And on the right hand side here is more of like a nice little bluish tone to it. And like I said, this is not gonna matter too much. You just really basically want a color that's kind of like almost in their, near the same, um, I guess, uh, 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 values, right? But also, you know, kind of just like obvious dark and light, right? So this hex code here is 434B5E. So if you guys type those hex codes in, you'll get the same as that colors that I have right here. Now, hard part is, is just making sure you just just uh, convert this to a, uh, to a smart object because if you just went to filter camera filter raw it's going to ask you anyway so just make sure you guys do it uh definitely didn't ask oh reason why yeah make sure you guys uh, right click and use the smart object because it's gonna it's gonna use the smart object over the original gray and that's not what you want so you want to make sure you use it over the gradient which the gradient is now on go over here and we're gonna go to uh camera filter raw <clears throat> also, whenever you do camera filter raw, honestly, uh, this doesn't really matter too much because you're literally just going to effects here and just using the grain amount and just putting this all the way up. But usually when you're using any kind of color correction kind of settings in camera filter raw, you definitely always want to make a smart object simply because it's going to be a way easier. Uh, uh, let me press OK. Right. If you guys want to change things up, it's super easy. Just go back into it. Just dub, uh, double click on it and you can change everything back up. You know what I mean? So it's definitely one of those things. That it's probably one of those uh, remembers. Right. Kind of right. Like one of those one of those things to remember for sure. Now, this color here, I'm going to make a new gradient for this one because I like this one personally. Now, this hex code is 0A0D13. It's a nice 
nice little dark blue and then again with the gray values here but i went with more of a blue tint of course and the hex code is 434b5e the same one as last time actually and however the gradients over right here and we just put this on the actual um let me clip mask this to the actual shape right here so you can see that that nice really nice really really nice blue i did have the values here go toward more of the darker side so usually your little middle point here is at the middle but you see how dark it is honestly so i'm gonna just take it move it left just enough so i can kind of get this really nice kind of really nice rich sort of like a uh, noise value to it so once you have that good to go we're gonna do one more basic little orange thing here let me where is that at i don't know why that's showing up there right one more little orange piece right here and that's just basically doing the same thing over again right so we're gonna go through through basically all the all the excuse me Every time you add a new shape, it's going to be, you know, foreground, background, then like your secondary background, we'll call it, right? So it's going to be like one, two, three, all the, it's going to always be the new, newest layers you put on your shapes. Just put them behind everything else. So it kind of looks like a, a cool little, uh, almost like a, like a weaving pattern, which I like to say a lot. Um, we're going to go here. <sighs> we're going to do this little shape here. And I'll say this is pretty good. Right there, make it a little more skinnier maybe and make this probably come out just a little bit more. By the way, the way I'm moving points is just holding control on them and clicking on them. That's how I get them uh, to move freely only uh, one point at a time. So now go over and then just simply just uh, combine it all together. Excuse me. And then make a new layer. Excuse me. A new color. Sorry. Way off right now. Uh, double click on here and go to gradient overlay and just use the same exact orange. Hopefully you guys saved it. All you have to do is, like I said, click on the gradient when you make it. Just press new. It's just going to do exactly what I did for the other uh, gradient that I showed you guys before. So now with this orange here, what I'm going to do now is make sure you kind of just rasterize it. Okay. Make a new layer. Clearly mask a new layer over that shape here. And then once again, hold control. Click on the thumbnail of the shape that you just made. And then you want to just take your uh, move, uh, your excuse me, your marquee tool here, which I just press M my keyboard for me personally. But you just move this to the right a little bit to kind of give you guys the same exact sort of like almost it's almost like using a um, expand and or a stroke. Basically, you just want to make sure you have that same kind of uh, angle, right? Uh, and what I'm gonna do here, make it white. Okay, okay. And we're just gonna kind of just do that little painting thing again. Just get really close to the uh, outside, but just have the the brushes faded and kind of be what highlights it, right? Control D to deselect. And then blend mode overlay take your eraser and say hey i'm gonna erase the top a little bit oh not that right here erase the top a little bit and i'll do one more copy of it the whole i'm holding alt and dragging it over and or just hold alt and drag it above it and then make sure you always have it clip mass right <sighs> i'll rotate it and i'll just do something like that right very very simple i think it looks really really pretty honestly and now i'm gonna do it just basically oh what the text is let's just put the text on really quick so i put uh starting I believe that font was this font, BBS, uh, BBS New or something like that, right? I'm just going to make sure I have this here. I'm just going to do this for this text here, right? And then starting and then the word soon was like this. Oh, no, I put stream soon. So I'm going to put starting stream and then I put the word soon in a different font, which I believe was uh, Arim or whatever, right? Arame, something like that. Let's just do this, right? Okay, and then the word soon. Let's go ahead and put the word soon in. Okay, and that's a Rama, I believe, right? Okay, so for this little, this is a very, very simple, basic kind of type uh, typography stack, I guess you would call it, right? For your whole little uh, starting soon screens and whatnot. This is honestly the whole portion of, uh, I guess I, I, I would say like kind of uh, decorating or designing your actual, you know, typography and what's gonna, how it's gonna say things. If you're gonna put other um, like social media stuff in there, it does honestly matter where you stack everything. This is a very general kind of like way of stacking the word of starting soon or stream starting soon, or, you know, whatever you wanna say. Maybe you wanna say something like powering up or something like that, you know? Um, it doesn't really, I would just say, always just try to go for a vertical stack first, horizontal stacking, in a, or so horizontal, I guess, you know, typing it out in a way that's like more like this, right? It's going to be a little bit more difficult, but just simply because more or less a design like something like this, where it's covering a lot of the areas, it's going to look very off balance. So it's probably the best idea for you guys to always go with a vertical stacking, like one below another word. Um, and I'm putting the word stream here. I'm going to make this the orange, same gradient of the orange here. So let me double click on here. Gradient and make it that north little orange. Okay, sweet. Now that I've done that, we're basically good to go and do the little final portions, which happens to be this little simple kind of stuff here. This is very, very, very easy. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is just show you guys really quickly. I'm just gonna take the word starting that I just already created. I'm gonna hold Alt, drag it out. That's gonna make a duplicate for me. Hold Control T, or excuse me, press Control T, right? I'm gonna hold Shift 
take the corner of this. The reason I'm holding shift is you can see right on the right side of my mouse, a little triangle, right? That shows the angle of what you're actually uh, rotating it at. If you hold shift, it rotates it at perfect 15 degrees, which means you're gonna get a perfect 90 degrees after you hit the 75 to get this perfect little obvious, you know, straight, as straight as possible it can be, kind of um, uh, turning your, your text, right? And I'm gonna just make it a little more bigger. Right, I'm just gonna put this right here. Put it as we're starting. I'm gonna kind of make it very big. And I'm, I'm, this is more or less a, a design portion of it, so I'm not gonna really say the word or excuse me, make the word super visible or readable. It's more or less just gonna gonna be. You, it's very obviously hinted. You can definitely say that the word here is starting, um, but it's not something you're just gonna worry about too much. So don't don't think about it as like you have to fit the word starting inside here. It's more of an aesthetic thing. So you can just kind of have the S and G kind of hanging off and whatnot, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and go to fill excuse me and we're gonna take the fill lowered all the way down to zero if you guys have no reason why you actually do that the fill is more or less a opacity right it does the same exact thing it lowers the the visibility of whatever layer you're on however it lowers the visibility of the layer itself or i guess the picture itself but all the actual layer styles still stay uh visible at 100 percent opacity unless you obviously change them uh through the actual setting itself like right here you know what i mean so here i'm gonna make this a nice little orange gradient Press OK, press OK again. By the way, the size is two, and the angle's at 90, kind of like this stuff is more very, like very basic. If you wanna go for something more like, uh, ang uh, excuse me, rec uh, mm, reflected, it's probably another good idea to kind of have, you can see more color, I guess you would say, or more, more transitions going if you have it at a 90 degree angle, besides just using a uh, linear, right? Uh, see how it's more like blue, uh, excuse me, blue. Uh, orange to like a, a, a deeper orange. This is gives you more of a, oh, excuse me, right here reflect gives you more of a uh, yellow orange yellow kind of vibe so it kind of has more of like a rainbow kind of feature to it right so i'm going to just keep mine on linear like i said though <clears throat> what i'm going to do now is to press ok and i'm going to rasterize this layer i always just like to rasterize layers if you guys want to create into smart objects it also works because just to show you guys this really quickly you want to create a smart object it's going to basically get rid of all the layer styles you want to do you can do uh you can do the same exact layer style of like if i want to do another stroke you can still do another stroke on the layer style right so just put the size up um, totally lied to myself because the stroke itself is now the actual shape lied. But and anyway, if you wanted to do like overlapping like gradients something like that, right? But if you guys ever know what uh, uh, I guess you would say creating your own smart object inside Photoshop, if I were to double click on this, it'll bring me to where the actual uh, the word is and also what all the effects were on. So if you had actually created a, a layer in which you want to do something like this, where you had a you know this here, you said hey I want to make this like I don't know just inner uh, inner shadow just because. Right, just to show you guys really quick. Right, and you say, hey, these two things are really cool. You can press Control click on both of these things, right click, and then create to a uh, convert to a smart object. Excuse me. And let's say you want to go back into it, do another inner inner glow or, or inner shadow or do something else. What right? Just kind of like understand and kind of have fun with it. Um, when you want to go back into it, you say, hey, now I want to fix this so I don't like how much the inner shadow is. All I gotta do is double click on this little page here, and it opens up all those things you just did. So just a little kind of like a little quick little recap, I guess you'd say, or or a demonstration of what uh, the whole point of using uh, smart objects are, because some some people might just not know. Um, simply though, all you gotta do now is once you rasterize this layer here, I'm gonna just make a new layer. Uh, I'm gonna right click, uh, uh, create clip mask, right? Hold, uh, excuse me, press B on my keyboard, right? For the B on my keyboard, I'm just gonna make my hardness a nice little 80 or so, just to make sure I don't have too many uh, lingering, I guess, uh, uh, very faint, um, like faded color. We'll just make it white. I'm just gonna simply just go in and make some of these little, uh, little, little spots white. So I'm gonna make that white here. We'll make like the half of the T white there. We'll say the inside of the N will make white and the inside of the O will make white. <gasps> Excuse me, I'll make that white as well, right? Just kind of like have it just look kind of like pretty r random, but also still like really neat and whatnot. I like that personally. And so last but not least is just doing the one simple little starting, starting uh, the word starting again, like right here, right? Let me show you what I was talking about in the beginning of this, uh, this beginning of the stream, beginning of the video though. I'm gonna write the word stream, right? Uh, oh no, starting, excuse me, starting. Right now, if you guys ever wanted to understand how to actually make it switch the orientation, what I was referring to before, because right now what I was gonna say is just do it like this, like we just did on the the whole starting here, and then apply this little noise on it. However, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, and I'm just gonna go right here, and this little uh on the character table by the way, it's under Windows Characters. Just if you guys want to bring it up really quickly, where is it at? Windows Character, right? And or you can just basically uh highlight everything of your text and press Control. I believe it's T. Right, yeah, and it brings up the character table as well. Um, if you click on these little three dots on the, on the top right of the actual table itself, it says change text orientation. If you click on that, that'll make it kind of go this way. And that's kind of what I wanted to try out and see if it looked good. I'll make the VA split not as much. We'll say something like that. I'm not entirely sure if it's gonna look as best because it's not gonna have much, uh, 
I guess it's not gonna it's gonna be very almost like too skinny where it's not having enough space being filled. Um, but that's obviously font choices. You can probably choose a different font, but yeah, I'm not too much of a fan of that. I'm just gonna go with the the original idea, which was just kind of rotating it. But if you guys know of a thick, really really thick font, um, you guys can definitely try that out. That's probably another another just little example you guys can just go for, right? So in other words, starting is like so. I'm gonna go ahead now, double click on this, put the little uh, nice little gray gradient on this, which will happen to be this one right here, right? Press OK, press OK again. I'm gonna go ahead and just rasterize the layer and or convert it to a clip mask. Go to your camera filter, uh, camera raw filter, go to your effects, go to your mount, go to your green, just drag it all the way up to 100%, press OK. And now I'm just gonna use uh, the gradient again, which happens to be the same one. I probably don't have to put it on again, but I'm just gonna, I'm going to because I feel like it's gonna be a little bit different. Let me see if I'm correct on that or if I'm wrong. Let's see if I uh, put this little gradient that we did the same as that gradient of this one right here, right? I just pointed it to my screen, but if I turn it off and on, yeah, it's different. Just because the noise itself actually applies like almost like a little bit of a white filter to it. So yes, adding the gradient again is a good idea. So now you have that here. It's the same as that gradient as this one right here. And uh, pretty much you're done. Um, one little final thing that I personally did for myself was I did add a bit of a kind of like a little uh, focus light almost like almost like a uh, I press my B on my keyboard, the brush. Um, I hold alt by the way to make this little diameter thing big and small if I just hold uh, right click move left and right while holding alt and up and down is the hardness so 0% hardness and I'm gonna take like a nice little gray just click on the middle here put this blend mode from normal to linear dodge add and take your eraser and kind of like make it a little more kind of like finesse right you want it to be like just a simple thing right there I'll put it like right here maybe I'll put one like right here kind of just finesse the light around a little bit just taking your eraser and kind of going around over it again just to kind of make sure you get it almost like very very random in a way you want it to be a little more random I think it looks pretty good right very simple very very subtle kind of light uh, effect to it um, also what I ended up doing as well was this and if I have if you guys have like a brush that's very very random and kind of like abstract um, if you guys have my brush pack it's probably one of those really really good um, purchases by the way just you know flaunt my own boat uh, boat rate quick um, but what I wanted to do was if you just have like a, a brush that just kind of has random kind of features to it. If you guys wanted to, by the way, you guys can totally have a background texture if you guys want. Um, it can be like a, uh, uh, how do you say, a pattern overlay and or just something like this, a little background texture like this. But I did use this. I did have an overlay, but I also did go to filter, blur, motion blur, and motion blur a little bit just to kind of have this little effect right here. You can see these little, little banding lines here. And if you guys want to basically make it a little more, uh, I guess, doubled up, just make a duplicate of the actual layer itself. Take your eraser, say, hey, there's a little bit too much there, a little bit too much here, and we'll say that's pretty good there. Just to kind of have it look a little bit like nice and, um, and just to have the background just look a little bit more different, right? I'm just gonna make sure that all this is good. All right, make sure this is the middle as far as I want it to be, and I believe that is pretty good and accurate. I'm gonna make this a little more bigger, and okay. And basically, guys, that's basically how I created this little portion here. Um, I also did, really quickly as well, click the top layer, all the way to the bottom of even your actual, make sure you guys put in your background as well, which happens to be this color right here. Control G to make a uh, group of everything, right? Control J is to make a duplicate of everything. And then Control E, after it's done loading the duplicate uh, duplicated group, you press Control E to then merge everything together. Right click, uh, convert to a smart object, go to your filter, camera filter raw again. This is a this is more like a final color correction kind of thing. If you guys want to see both the before and the after, this little Y down here switches and shows you guys the view of before on the left hand side and after on the right. So if I want to now, I can go my clarity, bring it up just a little bit. I'll say like plus 15 or so, right? That'll make the little noise par uh, portion here just kind of stand out a little more. You can see that kind of ha helps it stand out. And then just take my blacks here, right here, Right, these little values, just drag this a little bit further down. I'll say like almost, stay like the negative 15 range. You want to be very, very like precise because all the, the colors in the original uh, format, I guess the original design, you know, thought out process was already kind of very high contrast and whatnot. So you don't want to get too many weird kind of, uh, 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 I guess, values of color. Just want to mess around with just a little bit. And then we're going to go to the whites, bring it up by like maybe plus eight or so. Press OK. And you can see the final version itself looks pretty good. I would also also uh, I would honestly also probably go back and kind of fix this little little light here. I want to kind of make it a little more finesse. But as far as I know, I would be pretty happy with that. It's a very cool, fun little design. And hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video here today. Uh, it's been your boy Sesso. I know if the video seemed a little bit off, your boy, you know, if you guys follow me on Twitter, you guys know my grandfather did pass away today. Um, but I know for sure he would want me to still continue the day as it was, you know, fairly normal, even though it's not. Um, 
But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys didn't, just let me know anything you want to see me do. Maybe you guys want to see me some do something cool. But if I'm being honest, I still probably would have uploaded this video even if it was wasn't for the time kind of management that I had to do. But I think it looks pretty cool. It's just I, I think it's more or less the kind of uh, the noise filter or should be the noise kind of texture contrast is really cool little stroke and i think it looks pretty pretty awesome um but yeah that's gonna be it for me today how oh, i almost forgot that's what looks different the text effect i was like holy crap what looks so different right now let me quickly just copy one of these right here uh and i'll just guys i'll show you guys the quick little um text effect that i did for this you guys will be like why does it look different it's a text effect if i paste this on really quickly the text effect that i use for here is a gradient overlay on the left hand side is a little sort of like a grayish bluish tone the hex code is d2d9f1 and on the middle here click on the middle make another one and this one's going to be e7 e e f f press ok and on the right hand side here is the uh hex code d9 e 3 fb all very kind of like blue kind of uh, cool grayish tones and then you want to make sure this over you see this little portion right here this little white dot is more closer to this right hand side so make sure you guys move from the middle to the right hand side and make sure you move this one that's actually in the middle that's perfect and the scale here is at 144 and the angle we're just going to put it at ni a negative 90 so it's a little more easier for people to copy out and then normal blend mode and all that cool stuff and then inner glow you just want to make this a very nice little bluish tone if you want to you can maybe use orange now i think blue is the best because the we i use blue originally because the actual um the the gray tones of the actual white we're using like this is basically going to be my white but it has a little bit of blue hue to it i used a blue on blend mode linear dodge add opacity we'll just say 40 percent to make it all nice and even for you guys just kind of have that be more cohesive and look pretty good um, and then choke at one size at five and it'll give you guys this really really nice and clean kind of approach You can see the difference between this right here and this right here This is very flat, but this looks a little more sophisticated a little more thought out and that's what I did for the actual um, Text effect so I apologize for not remembering that but um, yeah Now I'm gonna be out guys. I'll talk to you guys later. Seso HQ out. Don't forget to keep smiling Stay positive even though I know it's freaking hard sometimes and just stay productive guys and you guys will you guys will conquer everything Hopefully I hope you guys all have a great weekend and you guys continue that out into the whole entire week of until you guys see my next video and you guys can hear it again right so love you guys talk to you guys later so hq out peace